Good day, YouTube. Uh, today I would like to talk about Throne and Liberty's fishing game mechanics and a little bit about the basics of that. I've had some friends complain that it was a little bit difficult in the beginning and not very intuitive. And I think maybe the tool tips and the little tutorial was lacking there for sure. So let's take a look at it and I'll give you some basic pointers. Let's get at it. Welcome to Uberclaw. Now, fishing can be lucrative, I guess. Uh, crafting uh, some of the recipes at the cook cook fire to uh, you can have great success on those and put those on the auction hall. You can also craft up some really nice stuff to give you some stat boosts and other bonuses. Uh, even XP bo boosts and money gain boost or at least soul gain. So there's plenty of reasons to cook foods. Uh, fish is one of the ingredients that you can use for that and you'll also have to do some fishing to uh, complete the main quest at least up until what's released now in the US market because we don't have the full game released yet. So there may be more of it, I don't know. Uh, maybe you guys who've been on the Korean servers can speak to that. So let's go over the basics of it so you know how to do it and how it works. It, the mechanics of it are actually not that difficult once you uh, learn the nuances of it and we're going to talk about that. Now, let's talk about bait. Bait, I've been using this paste bait because you can get that from uh, the shop I believe has it. If not, it was in the uh, contract coin vendor. I think it's at both. Yeah, there's just fishing bait there. You can use ornate coins to buy it. And I think you can get it from the uh, contract coin vendor as well. Uh, there's other types of bait. I don't have any in my bag. But you get worms from uh, collecting other materials like from the trees. Uh, you can get worms. And I'm sure there's going to be more bait later. And from my understanding, the different baits can... change how you fish or at least what you catch um, but let's talk about the basics we're going to use the paste bait and we're just going to do some fishing here to see show you the mechanics of it so um, F or cast that's very obvious we'll go through that now in this game you have a visualization of a fish swimming around underneath a what looks like a float or a bobber you hit Q to um, activate or set the hook and then you use A or D according to the direction of the fish left or right to basically wear it down similar to the idea of how you would actually fish if anybody's ever fished for anything large using a lighter tackle then you'll know that you'll have to set a drag and wear the fish down some before you can pull it in because the fish can pull quite hard even a small fish can feel quite large if it fights hard enough and it can come off. So well, it's the same things happening here in the game. And they're trying to, um, I guess, bring that real life element into it. Now, and not every fish are going to be easy. And at my current level of 11, I cannot catch every single thing that gets on my line here. But the real basic of it is the two meters. The far right meter is the... Uh, the green meter is your reeling. Um, they got a, a limited amount that you can reel. The idea is to let that refill once it comes down to the bottom. So you hit F to cast, Q to start the adventure, and A and D, left or right, will reel on the fish and begin to wear it down. Now, the left meter, which is kind of an orangey red color, is the fish's strength or stamina or endurance or some combination, but in, in any case, once it depletes, then you've caught the fish. Now, there's another part of this and it's that bar that goes down that left meter that has a little fish attached to it in a 
diamond. That is how much of your efforts are being applied to the fish. And the idea is for that to move continuously down. So I'll tell you now, you probably will be better off not watching the fish in the water to do this particular activity. You would watch those meters instead. Now, here's the gist of it. You're going to go the opposite direction of whatever the fish is pulling. If it's pulling right, you're going to pull left. Basically battling it. What happens is if it pulls right or left and you pull left, if the meter don't move, it gets off because it's winning. Going the opposite direction, you're pulling the line tighter and setting the hook deeper and reassuring your victory in the fishing adventure. But watching that bar with a little fish flipping around in it on the orange meter is the key. Making sure that it's continuously moving is how you win or how you end up collecting the fish or catching it. Now what I would recommend is to watch that bar on the red meter and make sure that it's continuously moving. So what happens when it stops moving? Well, you're pulling the same direction as the fish. It moves and changes direction a lot. Some fish more than others. So the idea is to constantly be aware of that. The easiest way to do that to me is just to watch that little bar on the meter. If you watch the bar on the meter and just change directions every time it stops, then you will catch a fish. There are some fish that you're not going to catch. Uh, currently I have a bamboo rod, which is basic rod. And as soon as I get enough of the natural jade to craft the steel rod, I'll upgrade to that. And I have also have my amatoys uh, on a quest to get the kraken rod, which is apparently the best rod in the game. Um, this is from the Korean side, who have access to the full game. I'll show you that in just a moment, how to acquire that rod. The other rods are from the sundry um, crafters. And if you go to Stone Guard and talk to the senior crafters, there is another uh, epic level rod that you can craft. But you'll have to craft other rods before that because they will be a prerequisite to craft the upgraded rod. For example, I'll need to craft the steel rod in order to be able to upgrade beyond that. A Kraken rod, as far as I know, is just a, a potential of winning outright, no crafting required. In any case, the rod will improve your chances of catching the more difficult fish. Now, some fish will pull harder and the meter will move slower. But it, again, it will be easier if you just watch the little bar on the red orangey meter on the left and make sure that it's continuously moving down in order to successfully catch the fish. And that's the secret, I guess, that is difficult. Now, when you first start out, it's just going to be hard because everything's going to be more powerful and easier. Your level's going to be lower. And you're going to have to level up which is the way it is with pretty much anything in an MMO like Throne of Liberty. Now each time you catch a fish you earn XP and of course after a certain point you'll gain, gain a level. And after a certain level most of the fishing becomes super easy. You will occasionally run across an extremely difficult fish. Uh, some of them move rapidly left and right. And when that happens you gotta be very quick to change your direction as well. That's why I recommend watching that meter more so than watching the fish because it's a more uh, accurate indicator than watching the fish because the graphic of the fish is a little modeled in the darker water and the fish are darker so it, it could be harder to see 
And it's real easy to just watch that meter. I also found that you don't necessarily have to hit Q to begin the adventure. And just because you don't hit Q doesn't mean that you're going to be unsuccessful. Um, I've caught plenty of fish after not hitting Q to begin the adventure. So I'm not entirely sure how that plays into the mechanic. Because you could just hit A or D to start it if you want. Just then, I did not hit Q. I just used A. So I wasn't pulling. So sometimes the fish will just keep pulling one direction and will rarely change. And in that case, you just have to keep pulling in opposite direction. And sometimes it gets too far out to the left or right, and it's you're you're going to lose the fish. It's just a, I guess, an RNG chance there of you getting the, of catching the fish is mixed in. So there's going to be some failures. This is a difficult fish. Gotta watch that meter and be quick to make changes. Now, there are different types of fish. The different types of bodies of water, as far as I know, there are two. Salt and fresh have different fish. So if you're looking for something for a particular recipe, you need to be aware of that. Uh, you're not going to see any largemouth bass out into the salty seawater area. For example, so if you want that or need that, you're going to have to go to the freshwater areas, which are inland, instead of the coast. You can also catch uh, small sacks and large sacks. Small sacks pretty much always have uh, solent, which is the coin, the gold coin in-game currency, and occasionally they'll have an extra reward a mat. Sometimes you even get a natural jade from a small sack. Large sacks uh, give you an option of selecting a portion of the reward, similar to some of the other containers that you could purchase in the game to get gear or items or materials. And you're more than likely to get a natural jade from the large sacks. Now, what is natural jade? Natural jade is one of the crafting materials required to upgrade your rod. You need 10 of them to upgrade from the bamboo rod to the steel rod. Once you upgrade the steel rod, some of the harder or more difficult fish will be a, become a little easier. And of course, the more upgrades you get done, the better that will. And also the graphic of the rod changes as well. But overall, fishing isn't terrible. Uh, after you level up a little bit and you get these basics down, you should be able to fish successfully and have a little bit of fun doing it. Um, what I do is I usually do this while I'm waiting on maybe a dungeon queue or if I'm waiting on a world boss to, you know, it's timer to get close. Something to that effect, I might do this. Otherwise, I'm probably running contracts, uh, either allied or abyssal contracts. But in between, I'm fishing, and you just kind of have to whittle away at it to get leveled up, so that you can become, so that the fishing becomes easier. But that's pretty much it. Um, as far as basics and the mechanics go, that's how this works. And hopefully, that helps you guys out. I almost forgot to show you where the Kraken Rod can be acquired. That's in your Amatoy's adventures, the uh, expeditions they go on. So you'll want to go to your Amatoy house and check that out. If you've leveled up and your Amatoy's are up past 11, or at 11 or greater, you can get into the area that will have a potential of rewarding you the Kraken Fishing Rod. Where you're going to want to go is the Daybreak Shore. Now, if you'll notice up here, you have the last land area, which is where you start. But after a certain level, you can begin doing these as well. I've been solely doing just Daybreak Shore. 
So when you do Daybreak Shore, you have the potential of these rewards. And these rewards include this sack, or bag, and you have a chance of getting the Kraken fishing rod. And there it is. A rod crafted from the tentacles of a deep sea monster and special metal. The strong but flexible material allows the rod to overpower fish. So that goes back to what I was telling you about upgraded fishing rod should allow you to get to the air, catch the harder fish. And apparently this is the uh, best in slot fishing rod. The chance of you getting it is pretty low, but you know, hopefully RNG favors you and you're able to get the rod. There are other, other epic rods you can get uh, besides the Kraken rod. And I don't know if the Kraken rod holds an advantage over those rods or not. I would have to assume an epic rod is an epic rod is an epic rod, but that might not be true. Uh, it does read fishing bonus level three beside or uh, in the description of this one, so that could be a thing. But you may have to send these guys out on quite a few expeditions before it comes back with a sack that yields that. And I've had a few sacks come back, but they haven't yielded the Kraken fishing rod. They usually have some kind of a material in it, like these that are listed. <clears throat> but hopefully, you know, you get uh, a good deal of chance, and the RNG favors you, and you're able to get the Kraken rod, and it will improve your fishing that much more. And I hope you guys enjoy fishing. Uh, I think it's fun in the game once you learn the mechanics and... You get leveled up, it's easier, it becomes a little more fun. Some of the uh, skins they've used on some of the fish are quite large, like a largemouth bass is almost as big as the torso of your character when you catch them. It's quite hilarious, actually. Like, world record big. <laughs> but uh, some of the other fish are not so big.
please uh, like and subscribe. And don't forget the notification uh, icon up there. And uh, you guys have a blessed day.